Tonight I will be using my very own personal telescope to take a picture of a black hole in space from my backyard. The black hole is known as Cygnus X1, and from our perspective on the planet Earth, it is located in the constellation, you guessed it, Cygnus. Cygnus X1 won't actually be the showstopper of tonight's image. It's located right next to a nebulous region with the brightest part being the Tulip Nebula. So if all goes wrong and I don't collect enough signal to reveal that black hole, Hopefully I'll still have a great image of the Tulip Nebula to show you guys. You can't actually see a real black hole with a normal camera and telescope like one I have in the backyard tonight. So what I will technically be capturing is a mass ejection from the black hole's core, or a bunch of matter that it's spewing into space, which in my opinion is just as cool. I've actually photographed this target before. I shot the Tulip Nebula last year with this same exact camera and telescope, however I was only able to get an hour and 30 minutes total of exposure time, so I wasn't able to reveal that black hole. I'm hoping to change that this time around. This will actually be my first clear night since earlier this month, when I left for Pennsylvania to attend the Cherry Springs Star Party. Meeting all you guys was awesome, but I'm happy to be back home, and hopefully the forecast holds true for tonight because I have not seen a star since then. I can't wait any longer to get all set up and ready to go, so let's see what gear I'll be using tonight to take this shot of the Tulip Nebula and Cygnus X1. camera I will be using to take a picture of the Tulip Nebula and hopefully Cygnus X1 tonight is the ZWO ASI 533MC Pro. It is a dedicated color astronomy camera, meaning it is made for being attached to the back of a telescope taking pictures of the night sky. Since I live about 25 minutes away from Chicago, I'm sure you can imagine that the light pollution here is pretty bad. So. The way I and many other astrophotographers combat this is we use specialized filters made for reducing the light pollution from the cities that we live by. The specific filter I'll be using tonight is the Optolong L Extreme, which is a narrow band filter, meaning it is the most extreme type of filter that cuts out the most light. Don't use these for galaxies only nebulae. I'm going to use my Skywatcher EVOSTAR 72 refractor telescope to photograph the Tulip Nebula tonight. It has a focal length of 420 millimeters, making it a relatively wide field telescope, and I checked my framing in a software called Stellarium, and I should fit the Tulip Nebula and Cygnus X1 in there nice and snug. It's currently about 8.50 right now, and it's just about go time. I can't quite see Polaris yet, uh, but I can see the moon, and it is bright. It's nearly a full moon tonight, which is obviously not ideal for deep sky astrophotography, but I'm confident that my L Extreme filter will be able to do its job. It is pretty quiet and very still right now. The only sounds that I currently hear around me are the air generators of the houses next to me, the roar of the cicadas, and the occasional very loud firework that's launched from the middle school just down the street. But let me tell you something, when the air generators turn off, the cicadas die down, and the fireworks stop being launched, and you're left with dead silence, it is a feeling unlike anything else that only astrophotographers know. You might think that there is a lot of pressure that's involved with taking the perfect deep sky image, with making sure everything's tracking properly and your camera's just at the right temperature. And don't get me wrong, when you first get your gear and you're setting everything up, it can be very confusing and I know I encountered many, many problems. It took me almost six months to get everything working properly after everything was bought. I know I encountered a lot of nights where I would cover up the telescope and storm inside knowing that I'd be missing a fully clear night because something wasn't working. And then coincidentally, you always figure it out the next morning as soon as that sun comes up. The only issue I'm having right now is the weather. It looks like it's going to become partly cloudy at around 10 to 11 p.m. at the latest. So remember how I said I was only able to get an hour and 30 minutes on the Tulip Nebula last year? Well, it looks like tonight is gonna to be a very similar night. This might be my cursed object. 
However, I can add those two data sets together and stack them all into one image that will look a lot cleaner. So hopefully if I get enough signal tonight and I combine it with last year's data, I'll be able to get a much better image. I'm currently focusing my setup so that I will have pinpoint sharp images of the Tulip Nebula and Cygnus X1. How I do this is I slew to the zenith, which is the highest point in our night sky with my setup, and I loop images over and over again, slowly adjusting focus with my camera. Now, I'm running a mini PC on my telescope setup right now. That's the little black box you saw me plug a power cord into earlier. and. There's no screen on it, so I use a software called AnyDesk to connect to my phone while I'm outside through Wi-Fi. So I can actually adjust all the settings of my setup and slew the mount and control the mini PC with my phone. And then when I go inside, I can actually see what's going on with my setup on my computer inside because AnyDesk works with both computers and phones. So I can monitor and control my setup inside as well as outside with my phone. It's a really great setup as long as you have a strong Wi-Fi connection to your setup from where you are shooting. Once my setup is all focused and ready to go, I have to polar align the telescope, which for those of you who are new to astrophotography, it means I have to align my tracking mount with the north celestial pole so I can accurately track the night sky over a period of time. And normally how you would do this in the northern hemisphere is by looking through the reticle that your mount has for viewing Polaris and putting it in the right spot for polar alignment. But I cannot see Polaris as there is a a huge tree blocking it and when the leaves come in the summer it completely blocks Polaris from my field of view. So for polar alignment I use my software for imaging that I use called Nina. I use its three-point polar alignment feature which triangulates where Polaris should be in the night sky by taking a series of images while slewing across the axis and telling you how much you need to adjust your mount. Nina really is an incredible piece of software and I highly recommend it for you if you are starting astrophotography there are other alternatives. I've used software such as Astrophotography Tool, but Nina is completely free and if I'm being honest, it offers the best experience. It has been a little bit. It is a little past 12.30 now, and the very bright moon is starting to set, so I'm gonna use it for all the light that it has. My setup is tracking and imaging the Tulip Nebula with three minute exposures. Um, and so far, there is not a cloud in sight. I started to get very nervous because the Apple Weather app, one of the six weather apps that I have on my phone, said that there was going to be a 40% chance of thunderstorms at 3 a.m., which I would already be well into bed at 3 a.m. So that was very nerve wracking. But what made it even more nerve wracking was that now it says it's just going to be cloudy and there's no chance of thunderstorms. The rest of my weather app said there was never going to be any chance of thunderstorms, but they also say it's cloudy right now, which it is obviously not. So I don't know what's going on with the weather. I'm going to stay up for a little bit and watch it and see what happens. And if none of the weather apps say it's going to rain again and it doesn't look like 
any clouds are coming inside, I'm just gonna leave my telescope running. But if clouds start to come in later in the night around two in the morning, then I'm gonna park it and cover everything um, because there's no point in letting it run through the clouds anyways. But it's always a little stressful when things like this happen because the weather tonight has been very unpredictable. None of the weather apps know what to say. None of them said it was gonna be clear tonight earlier this morning and now it is. So I have no idea what could be happening tonight. So I will keep you guys updated. Being back at home from Cherry Springs and this being the first night sky I've seen since then, it really puts in perspective the difference between Bortle 9 and Bortle 2. It never occurred to me how light polluted I was. I would always put in my image descriptions on Instagram that I was shooting from Bortle 9 so that people would understand what kind of conditions that I was imaging from, but it never really occurred to me until recently what that actually meant. I had been to Bortle 4 sites before and had my mind blown, and I had been to Bortle 2 sites on a full moon like Hawaii earlier this year, but I had never been to a site like Cherry Springs where you are on top of a mountain on a new moon night in almost Bortle 1 skies, low Bortle 2 skies. And it really showed me what the night sky is supposed to look like. If all of us as a group made efforts to dome our street lights and by motion detecting security lights instead of the ones that stay on all night, I think all of you would be blown away at how much darker all of your skies would be if you're living in a light polluted area. Filters wouldn't be necessary, only for full moon. You could live 30 minutes away from Chicago like I do and see the Milky Way with your naked eye. Right now, that sounds like a dream to all of us, but organizations like IDSA, the International Dark Sky Association, are already working towards that goal, and they need all the support from us that we can get. I put so many faces to all the names that I see on Instagram, posting incredible images all the time, and getting to take pictures with all of you in the same field was pretty surreal. But what's even more surreal to me now is coming home and taking pictures all by myself again in the solitude of my own backyard, knowing that all of you guys are out there imaging with me all across the country and even the world. It's not just about the pixels on a screen or the image that you get the next morning after processing all your data. It's about the connections you build and the experiences that you have. Those who have never done astrophotography before will never understand the experience that is waiting outside next to your telescope on a bitter cold 15 degree January night, anxiously anticipating your sub-exposure of the Orion Nebula to come in so you can go to bed. Those things don't come through liking an Instagram post or watching a YouTube video like this one. They come through going outside and doing the best you can with the gear that you have. I hope this inspires you that you can see me under a full moon in Bortle 9 skies, still being able to get decent astrophotography images. Moral of the story being, if I can do it, so can you. I hope that the image of the Tulip Nebula and Cygnus X1 that I'm about to show you has a little bit more meaning now that you've watched this whole video and it inspires you to head outside and shoot some images for yourself. With that being said, I will see you guys on the next clear night.